party people in the house. Let's go. It is episode 21 of Tremendous Opinions Podcast. I am your host, self-proclaimed host, Miles Kilby, and I have no notes for tonight. So I don't know where this is going to go, what we're going to talk about. Um, Number 21 makes me think of Sean Taylor, a football player that's passed away in like the mid-2000s. He was me and Paxton's favorite player defensive player at the time so rest in peace Sean Taylor man I got a figurine of my favorite 21 uh, basketball player Kevin Garnett the big Tikuchi and uh, I don't know a lot's happened since the last podcast last podcast was about my brother's wedding which still is being talked about in like group texts and stuff like that where you know sending videos and pictures of the weekend uh, but this episode, man, let me see, what can we talk about? <clears throat> um, last weekend was the, uh, second week of college football, and I'm a big UNC fan, if you can't tell or haven't heard already, so I bought two tickets, it's pretty cheap, they're playing Georgia State, it's not a big game. But it was our season opener, and uh, we have a pretty good team, so I figured might as well. We'll go down there. So I got two tickets, took my sister, and it was so fun, man. Um, Some of the listeners might not know who Jeff Saturday is. He was an offensive lineman, the center for Peyton Manning and that Indianapolis Colts team that won the Super Bowl. He was a Tar Heel in college. Um good player and he was there uh lawrence taylor is someone that a couple people i brought his name up and some people didn't know who he was but lawrence taylor if you look him up on youtube uh there's crazy stories about this guy man uh lawrence taylor was a football player in the 80s went to unc and then he was drafted number two overall in, I think, like the 82 NFL draft, something like that. Went to the Giants and played for the Giants for like 10 years, 11 years, something like that. And tremendous career. And he was nasty. He was notorious, known for just bullying bullies. Like uh, his highlights kind of speak for themselves. But uh, some lesser known stories or like folk tales uh, about Sean Taylor, or Sean Taylor, Lawrence Taylor, LT. Um, I think it was Brad Doherty, who was a basketball player at UNC in the 80s. He was like an All-American type, went to the NBA. Brad Doherty used to play pickup games at UNC campus with some of the ball players. Lawrence Taylor would come down there, the football player, would come play pickup basketball with these guys. And... Lawrence Taylor had a a history with drugs. I don't know if drugs had something to do with this incident or not, but uh, the story is that they started the pickup games before LT showed up. And when he showed up, he was not happy about that. He, during the middle of the game, walked out onto the court, jumped up. He was so big and strong. He jumped up and pulled the whole backboard and rim down off of the the goal he just broke it off and walked off the court with it and said if he's not playing nobody's playing so that's the kind of guy we got to see Saturday at the game and it was a good environment you know we've been locked up for two years almost now so being out there in a sea of like 60,000 people doing the wave that was the coolest wave I've ever seen it went for like 30 minutes the student section man it just gives you life it smells like I don't know, football stadiums always smell like cigarettes and like nachos to me for some reason, and it smells good. Um, During the break of every quarter, there was like an automated, I don't know, like a robot voice, like, Carolina fans, a friendly reminder to please wear your mask at all our indoor facilities. And there was like this, it smelled like beer too, like totally smelled like beer. I gagged at one point because it was so strong. There was a guy like three rows up 
he was just hammered, a good old country boy. And that automated thing said, please wear your mask. He stands up with a beer in his hand. He said, <laughs> he said in front of everybody, he said, hell, we wearing that mask. And then there was a like abrupt applause. He said, yeah. <laughs> Tar Heel fans are the realest, dude. Everybody was represented there at that game. It was fun to be there. Um, really, week one, the UNC team, they were ranked 10 in the country, and they got beat by Virginia Tech. It was an upset, so I didn't know what I was going to see at the game. But they really put on a good show, and they whooped up on Georgia State. And... uh Sam Howell's a quarterback for UNC. I really think he still has a shot at the Heisman because he, he was showing out last weekend. Um, I'm filming this on Thursday night. I didn't even bother watching the Giants and Washington football team. I don't know why they would even give them a like a solo night. That's the one of the worst matchups the NFL could even put together. Freaking... Giants and Saquon is hurt, dude. Like, I'd rather, I'd rather. I don't even know why. <laughs> I was about to say something bad. I'd rather spill more nacho sauce on my essential shirt. That's what I'd rather do. Uh, oh, I. How far am I? I'm seven minutes into the podcast and didn't even address the fact that I have a sword on the table. That's a new addition. Um, what else I got on the table? I opened a couple of packs of basketball cards today, actually. And I opened up a Zion Williamson rookie card that's numbered to 125. There's only 125 of these. I looked up comps on eBay, and it was like anywhere from 150 to 400 bucks. So I came up today on a pretty sweet basketball card and this is the hat that I got at the football game at the team store I'm a sucker for Carolina stuff I have too much for my own good but I gotta get something every time I go to any game Uh, it's a corduroy hat probably can't tell because my camera is awful I got like the cheapest camera Best Buy had to offer but uh yeah, there's definitely corduroy on that thing. And the hat that I'm wearing, I'm an unofficial, self-proclaimed ambassador for Brady Manix merch. So if you have the avail- available funds, head on over to Brady Manix Instagram page and click on that link. <laughs> I feel so bad. I feel like a loser saying that. Click on that link. Subscribe and like. But dude, I got some more Brady Manic merch coming in in the mail. Uh, I got my first order in already. And I would have it on, but they're dirty. I wore them like twice already. So the Brady Manic merch is fire. And that brings up, I haven't talked about this. I think I actually did once on the episode that the camera stopped working. But uh, I'm still up in the air on whether it's a good thing that the college athletes can rake in the dough now. I know Brady's going to hate me saying that. But, man, I don't know if it's going to change the the way of the world here in college basketball, college football. Like the quarterback for Bama is a millionaire already. And, I mean, he can't even go into a a gas station and buy a pack of smokes, you know? And, like, ukulele, the quarterback for Clemson, dude, he hasn't proven anything, and he's probably paid up. He could start his own business already. And for what? I don't know. But that's beside the point. The point is, Brady Manic merches fire, and I am a uh, self-proclaimed ambassador for his merchandise that's again unofficial um i can talk about fantasy football usually i'm like a guru and people call me 
I'll get like four or five buddies calling me on the regular to ask me questions about fantasy football. And I don't know why, uh, because my teams are pretty god-awful on a regular basis. Um, this last week, the first week of NFL football, I have four fantasy leagues, which is kind of overkill this year. You know what? I haven't done this yet, but I'm going to go ahead and kick my feet up here. Ah. Fantasy football. I have four leagues, and that's overdoing it. It's really too much to keep up with, especially seeing as how I do fan duel as well, and I'll put like five lineups of that every week. So it's a lot to pay attention to, but let's see if I can remember everything here. Um, my own personal league, the one I care about the most, I got waxed. I'm 10th place out of 10. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the league where I had... Dude, they just really did me a, in for a doozy last week. Aaron Rodgers, who's the MVP of the league last week, got me three freaking points. And really, I could whine about my fantasy football teams individually all day. That would take an hour. I'll spare you the ear beating. Um, but I think it was a fluke, so I'm not going to be too down on myself. I went two for two in my leagues, and um, in FanDuel, the silver lining, I getting like a $5 weekly deal with this guy Marcus, who I've talked about on the podcast, and uh, I won the first league. I won 55 bucks, so I'll take it. I'll take it. The two for two and the 55, not bad. Trying to make a big trade, but I don't know. CC's not feeling me, so we'll see how he feels after this week. But I'm not hurting. Two and two's a fluke. I'm about to go four and no this week. And I already told Marcus I'm about to double up on that 55. I'm going to start the year off two for two in the freaking fan duel. Um, I don't know where the sword came from. I came up here like a couple of days ago and it was just sitting there. So, uh, it's definitely mine. It's not like a, like a ghost put it there and it's like a random pirate sword. It's my sword. Uh, I'm not going to explain why I have a sword. I've had a sword for a long time, but I haven't seen it in freaking years. I don't know where it came from, but it's cool and it's going to stay right there. Today, I, I'm a YouTube fiend. I mean, my channel sucks, and I'm not really doing much to improve the likeness of my videos or the channel. Uh, but, dude, I love discovering creators and uh, quality content. And really, it's mostly cringy watching reaction videos, but... I mean, I found a couple of creators and React people that I like, and I watched a guy watch Lord of the Rings for the first time. And it'll do your heart good to either watch someone take in, like Lord of the Rings or something, or a song that you know and love, and you watch someone listen to it for the first time. I don't know, I like doing that. But that kind of also shows how deep into the rabbit hole of YouTube I've gotten. And it's pretty embarrassing. I would hate to see my screen time on YouTube on a daily basis. It's out of this world. But really, I don't know. A lot of my entertainment is podcast. I probably listen to like three hours of podcasts every day. That's how I got into doing this. Um, I don't know. This isn't too far into the podcast. What can I lay on you people? This is 15 minutes in. I got to hike it up. Let's see. Okay. This really pushed my buttons. I get on Snapchat and they got like the, I don't know. It's like fraudulent stories dude like TMZ or whatever the things that you can click on at the bottom like the freaking tabloid 
garbage news, dude, one of them was just saying how much better and obviously better Drake's album was than Kanye's. Okay. I'm not a Drake hater at all. My freaking points and opinions about to come forth are probably uh, going to convince you otherwise. But I've been a long time Drake fan. I have Drake's album. Oh God, I'm about to break something. I have Drake's album right here. I love Drake and have for a long time. But the truth of the matter is that I truly, in my heart of hearts, in the depth of my soul, believe that Donda was better than Certified Lover Boy. Yes, there's a couple slappers on CLB. Yes, it's Drake, and it's going to be a huge tsunami wave anytime he drops a major project. But, track for track, and overall quality of the works of art, Kanye, I, I don't even see how it's a fight. Donda is insanely out of this world good. And that's coming from me trying to be respectful to Drake. Yeah, I already said it. There's some bangers on CLB. I'm not downing it at all. But Donda has been released for a couple of weeks and dude to me it's a giant and it keeps getting better each time I listen to it I'm not going to look up the names uh, not the Donda chant because that's not even a song to start off the album but the actual Donda song that's named Donda is good Praise God is good. Jesus Lord is good. Off the Grid. Hurricane with The Weeknd. Remote Control with Young Thug. Moon with Kid Cudi. Uh, jail with Jay-Z. Jail Part 2 with The Baby. Jesus Lord is my favorite song on the album featuring Jay Electronica. And the Part 2 goes even harder with Locks and uh, Styles P. Uh, Jada Kiss dude it's like a 12 minute song CLB like if you were taking these individual songs off Donda and CLB and putting them up ranking them Too Sexy from CLB would be up there because that slaps I'll give them that but the I don't know the rest of them blended into me and they sounded the same I wasn't taken away to another place each track, if you listen to 1 through, what, 27 or whatever on Donda, it takes you to a different place. It's like sightseeing. It's like at a museum. You look at this, you look at this. Up next is this. And it, each is totally different and unique in their own way. And they're beautiful. I mean, it may just be my specific lane. But then again, my lane's not specific. I, if you were to go through these albums, it's Led Zeppelin, Rick James, The Weeknd, Space Jam. And I got both vinyls from Kanye and Drake, so I'm totally unbiased in my music. Uh, I don't know. My musical taste is abroad. So I'm really trying to give an even keel judgment here and the I know it's crazy antics with Marilyn Manson on the front porch and the baby and the thing that you can't see if it's the baby or not at the listening party uh, Kim Kardashian in a creepy wedding dress I don't know what's going on he set himself on fire I don't care again the shenanigans the dissing, the beef, dude, like we're in elementary school, tweeting each other. I don't care. What I care about is the sonics, the lyrics, the musical patois of the album. And Donda won, hands down. So I, 
I don't know if Drake paid these tabloid people to say that, to say how good his album was, but dude, there's no chance that that sticks up against Donda. And I don't care who thinks what, that's what I think. And, I mean, I'll keep listening to both of them. It's not like I'd pick sides. I'm just letting you know, coming direct from the source, Donda's better. Absolutely. And I saw, I forget what it is, maybe one of those billboards or something had, or maybe something on Instagram. Honestly, can't remember. Drake said something about he partially produced CLB. I could tell you Kanye had his hands on every single second of that album, of Donda, and it's that good. So his musical taste still in his estranged, I mean, I don't know what's been going on with him with the, again, the Marilyn Manson and the weird staying at the Mercedes Benz for a month and a half. I don't know what he's doing, but he's doing something right. I can't clown on him, man. I love the album. And I can't find it on vinyl. Uh, God knows how much it is. I looked up the Donda drop, like the merch. $200 for a shirt, 60 bucks for a hat. I mean, I'll get the shoes, but no, I can't pay 200 for the shirt. Uh, even though I did see a shirt from a listening party that was super fresh. But, uh, yeah, they're way too much money. Oh, man, Carolina basketball's playing with my emotions. Um, even, I probably like going to late night better than I like going to a regular game. For those who don't know, UNC basketball puts on a annual like opening up of the season party where it's like at midnight, they pack out the arena, introduce the new players, play some pickup ball, do a little dancing and joking and laughing, have some legends in there, and it's a good night for all. And it was supposed to be in like a week and a half, but they just yesterday, I think it was, rescheduled it for October 15th. But either way, I'm in there like swimwear, an unofficial, self-proclaimed brand ambassador. Yeah, dude, I'm pumped up for it. Um... Uh, Hmm. That may be it, y'all. Trying to think. Oh, my legs went numb. Ooh. Dude. I took up the trash bins, like the recycle one and the regular one, to the front of the street the other day. And it's like a, I don't know, 20 or 30 yards up the thing. And I thought it was all good, all normal, until... I just felt fire everywhere. And I looked down. There was like 30 ants on both arms. And I almost had a heart attack and just fell over right there in the driveway. Just let them have me, dude. I hate bugs. I hate bug bites. Dude, there's like one, mm, at least like 10 or 12 little bites on my fingers. And it looked like I just put my hands in a beehive and just got stung all over the place and it was all swollen. I'm a crybaby, especially when I'm like sick or hurt. It's tough. I'm sure this is just an ear beating. Worst podcast in the world. My fantasy team sucks, all of them. <sighs> it's okay. They're postponing late night. My life's in shambles. It's okay. I'm a self-proclaimed brand ambassador and I got another corduroy hat that I'm never going to wear because I'm an unofficial sponsor. R.I.P. Sean Taylor, baby. If you don't know who Sean Taylor is, you can look that up. Look up Sean Taylor. 
look up Lawrence Taylor and go get you a Brady Manic shirt, dude. How many times I gotta tell you? They're 25 bucks. I left a sick review for the hat, too. I told the people I could drive a big rig now. A nice little Brady Manic trucker hat. You can get the stickers. I got the stickers on my computer, on the on the speakers. I got Brady Manic stickers everywhere. You know why? Because I'm an unofficial sponsor. That's why. Self-proclaimed brand ambassador. God bless the Tar Heel Nation. God bless them against Virginia this Saturday. I think it's at home, but I'm not going to go. That was a beating, honestly. Great time, but still a beating. And, yeah, I'm glad I left the sword on the table. That's dope. I don't know where it came from, but really, really happy about that, too. And, okay, I, I wanted to say this. So, yeah, we're getting close to 30 minutes. If you're sticking with me this far, thank you. And just a public service announcement, if you just watch this on YouTube, I have a couple of episodes that are just audio only on Spotify or Apple Podcast app called Vinyl Soul Searching. And that's just me and my sister playing through our vinyl records. I can't put it on YouTube because of copyright infringement, but they'll allow it on the audio only platforms. So they're less of a near beating than these. It's not nonsense and, uh, you know, rambling nonstop. It's listening to solid slappers off a Victrola record player. So it's one of the favorite things that I do. I love recording those episodes. We're going to record another one here in the coming days. So uh, check those out and let me know what you think about them. Again, I have like the worst audio setup in the world. But hey, it's okay. I have a sword on the table and a Zion rookie card. And Kevin Garnett, number 21 on the jersey, number one in your heart. And that'll do it for episode 21. Say a prayer for my fantasy teams going into the weekend because Lord knows they need it. All right, y'all be safe. Don't do nothing I wouldn't do. And volume three, I think it is, yeah. I don't even know anymore. Yeah, volume three final soul searching coming up soon. Thank you. God bless.